37 degrees and we got it there she's like I'm cold I was like sorry sorry babe it is freezing yeah does everybody have their recording devices all set up and ready to go awesome all right we have Vanderbilt women's basketball head coach Shay Ralph we'll go ahead and open up the floor for questions coach I uh, Iona Mitchell getting some minutes against South Carolina what have you seen in her development that allowed her to earn that time on the floor We've been putting her in, uh, in situations in practice where she gets more comfortable. Um, you know, she, she, there was a, a, a lot of things that went on in the beginning of the season that put her a little bit behind. And so really, for me, my job for, for our players is to get them to be really comfortable and confident in situations that I know they're going to face in a game. And up until last week, I didn't feel like Mitch was either. And, um, and then she had a great week last week. And then, you know, f as fate would have it, Sasha got her second foul really early in the second quarter. And I thought it, would, it was a great opportunity for Mitch to go in. And I mean, <laughs> she, I thought she handled it really well. It's a, t it's a really tough environment. Um, she's a freshman. You could, s you could tell she was a little anxious, but I felt like she did some good things. And hopefully as we move on in the season. She's 6'5". She's a big body. She's, she's an SEC athlete. Um, and, and she's really earned, you know, a few minutes here and there, at least, in practice. It'll just depend on um, who we play, how they play, and, and kind of what's going on in the game if I feel like she, it's a successful opportunity for her or not. But, yeah, I was happy that, that we were able to use her, um, and I was pissed that Sasha was in foul trouble. Mm -hmm. Seeing Sasha, though, pick up those early fouls and then kind of for the second half stay out of further foul mm -hmm. trouble and kind of get going there at the end, you know, what did that, that do for you? It's growth, right, for her specifically because she, Sasha's a kind of player that um, it's, it's better for her to play through some things. And, uh, and, and in a game like that, the way that it was being called, I just, I just didn't feel like I could put her back in in the first half. Usually my veteran players, I'll trust them, but um, but the, <laughs> that kid's big. And then, you know, the kid behind her's big, and the kid behind her's big. And so the way the game was being called, I just didn't trust that she wouldn't get her third foul. Then in the second half, I mean, I didn't think we started off the third quarter great. And Sasha turned it around basically with just effort. And, you know, when you, when you deal with um, kind of where the trajectory of our program is, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes hard to develop real confidence. You know what I mean? Like it can be easy when um, things are going your way to get shaken out of the tree pretty quickly. Um, but I felt like what happened on Sunday was a step forward in the direction of real confidence for our team because we took a couple early punches with foul trouble. We got down by 10. I mean, it was neck and neck there for a while. We're down by 10 at halftime. And then I felt like we fought our way back to being pretty competitive down the stretch. And then when we watched the film today, you see, hey, had we done these few things defensively a little different, then maybe we would have been competitive towards the end of the game as well to at least fight for an, op an opportunity to win. And um, I know it didn't feel like that in the third quarter uh, when we're down by 20. But when you look at the things that we don't normally do that we did in that game and the fact that South Carolina took advantage of every mistake that we made, then I feel like that's an area where we can grow. And hopefully, you know, when we play them again, hopefully in the SEC tournament, it'll be different. What do you think the team learned from playing in that atmosphere and against the number one team in the country? I said this a little bit um, in the press conference after. I think they saw what's possible. I mean... South Carolina uh, is number one for a reason, but when Don took the job, they weren't even close to that. And um, our SWA, Don Ellerby, she was an athlete uh, at South Carolina. She was on the trip with us, and she, interesting, interestingly enough, worked in the marketing department for women's basketball and said that she had, you know, when Don, her, Don's first year, she was a marketing director, and they were trying to get 1,000 people in the stands. And then they got 5,000 people for uh, like girl, like Girl Scout Day or something, <laughs> and she was really excited. And she said to Don, like, "Hey, we got this many people." And Don was like, "Hey, that's great, but I know you can do better, <laughs> you know." And now they have eighteen thousand people in the stands, and they're a perennial favorite to compete for a national championship. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that long ago that they weren't. And I also think that that um, 
that it's exciting for them to see. Like when you when you put something out there on the floor, people will come and support it. It's an awesome environment. It's a true home court um, advantage. And then, you know, when you want to compete at the level we want to compete at, you got to be able to win games in that environment. And so they, they got a chance to see, feel like, and compete in a game um, where you, you got to figure out how to win in that environment if you're going to be a championship team. Shay, obviously you're someone who embraces the grind and the challenge of achieving success. How do you pass that along to your players at this point in the season and you guys grinding through the SEC like this? You do it, oh, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's, it's just with um, consistency. I think is my biggest is the biggest thing that I try to give my team because I ask for that in return. I, every day they're going to see the same person. Every day they're going to get the same version of me, um, and I'm going to show up and demand the things that I know they can give me every day. And I don't think that every day is going to be our best day. But then we try to figure out how to learn from that. Um, and one of the things that I that I think has been helpful for our players is for me not to lose my mind every time we don't get what we want. And, um, and I appreciate that we're able to battle through adverse situations with poise most of the time and composure. That doesn't mean we always figure it out, um, but I feel like the more, the more we face those and we approach them with level-headed um, consistency and we say, hey, these are the things we can do better. These are the things that, um, that we did really well, then we can, we can continue to kind of stack those days and progress day by day, game by game, win by win. And, and to this point, I think that that's probably been the thing that's, that's helped our program the most, is just being very, from the top down, very consistent approach every day. This is how we're gonna be. This is what we're gonna do. We're not gonna lose our minds when we lose a game because we lost a game. You know, there are plenty, plenty of possessions that we have that we could win, but it's an opportunity to learn. And then we, we keep moving on. So I think that's probably the biggest key, if I had to say anything. Um, and, and then making sure that our players enjoy the, the journey. You know, like it's hard to do what they're doing and it's easy to look at them and say like, man, these are all the things that you guys aren't good at or these are all the, the, the mistakes that your players made. They know that, we know that. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, they're still trying to figure out a way to grow up and to be great at a sport um, that has a spotlight on it, that people are watching them make all their, I mean, think about that, people are watching them make all their mistakes and then they have something to say about it. I think for me, it's just helping them navigate what that looks like and understanding like, all right, keep doing that with effort, keep doing it with energy, keep you know, communicating, keep learning how to be an adult because life's gonna do that to you too. And you gotta figure out a way to be successful no matter what. Um, and a lot of that is, is, you know, you get to the end of it and you're like, oh, that's it, I was miserable the whole time. You know, I don't want them to be miserable. I want them to enjoy it, but they have to understand that there's, there's hard work to be done as well. Can the atmosphere in South Carolina tell you anything about the state of women's basketball and how it's grown? Yeah, for sure. Um, there's a lot of people. And they were locked in to the game. It was it was really really cool. Um, I thought they did a good job with the in game experience. And um, and you know I came from a place that we had a lot of people as well, but it felt different. They have something special there, um, and I'm hoping that we can kind of create the same the same thing here. Your guys' 74 points against South Carolina was the second most a team has scored on them all season. Can you talk about what you like from your offense on Sunday? Yeah, I felt like we moved a little bit better on Sunday. I think, you know, we've gone through stretches, especially, uh, you know, the end of the Tennessee game, Auburn, some parts of the Missouri game where we just felt super stagnant, like we didn't get what we wanted and we just stopped moving. And then we watched one player go one-on-one -on -one, um, or we threw the ball out of bounds because we didn't have anyone else to throw it to or we took a poor shot. I felt like we didn't panic in moments where we didn't get what we wanted off the first or second option and our kids just started to play. We've been working on that, so I was happy for them that they found success. Um, and then, you know, when you have players like Aga step up and, you know, have the game that she did, it kind of takes the pressure off of some of our other players who um, ha know that they have to come in and play high minutes and produce a lot. So if Camille and Aga and hopefully Justine comes along and you know J.O. does what she does hopefully 
Um, and Mitch maybe can, can play a little more. If we can start to spread out the point production, then I feel like that's also um, a, a more of a recipe for success for us. Moving on, moving on to the Ole Miss game, they've won, they've won the past few games. What have you seen from them this season? Yeah, they're like the quintessential SEC team, you know. Um, they, they're really tough. They play hard, um, incredibly athletic. They do a lot of switching as well. Um, very aggressive rebounding team. You know, they, they kind of hang their hat on defense. Uh, so I think for us, it's just continuing to get better at the things that we do that um, can, can help us be successful on both ends. I felt like uh, for us in the losses that we've had, specifically in conference, we've had some defensive breakdowns that in like very untimely moments uh, that just we can't have. So we can continue to chip away and our players get more comfortable um, in our offense and, and just with movement and understanding where they can, can attack and when they can attack, and we just keep locking up on defense, then, then we'll be competitive in any game. But we can't make some of the mistakes we made on Sunday um, and, in, and in the other you know, couple games that, that we've lost and feel like we're going to be in a good position to win. You know? And it'll be the same on Thursday. So we, just, we have to keep them in front of us. We have to rebound the ball. We can't let their top scorers, you know, go crazy. And then on offense, we got to value the ball and get great possessions, whether we get a good shot or we, you know, and we make it, or we just got a great shot and we miss it. We got to the free throw line. Those are, those are good possessions for us, and we need to stack those together. When an offense is stagnant as a coach, how do you address that? Do you just tell them to move it more? Do you call it yeah. to get it out of it? Or yeah. How do you address that? It's a good question. I think, um, I think what I've learned is to <laughs> – my husband says it in the best way, relinquish the illusion of control and to simplify. So we spend a lot of time in our off week uh, putting them in a position where they just had to play. So there's, there's times and very important moments where you have to have a strategy and, um, and you weren't trying to get it one, this shot in this moment at that time. That's important. you got to work on that. But you also have to work on when the shit hits, oh, when the, everything <laughs> goes poorly, and sorry, <laughs> and, and everything is taken away, then what? Then what? Right? Then what? Because when you get into March and April, early April, everybody scouts. Everyone's going to make it super difficult for you to score because they're going to know everything that you're doing and everything that, that you're good at, and they're going to try to take it all away. Then your players have to be comfortable and confident to make plays. It's my job. And it doesn't happen in a day, a week, a month. You just have to kind of work on it every day, put them in uncomfortable positions. Hey, we're not running an offense. You guys just have to figure out how to get a great shot right now, four on four in the half quarter, five on five. Um, or I'll put a certain amount of time up and have them run a few things, and they have to get a, a good shot without turning the ball over. And that takes time and patience, but you, you just have to be consistent. And to me, this team has responded really well to that. So we'll just keep doing it that way. This Ole Miss program is less than five years removed from going winless in the SEC and then went to the Sweet 16 last year. What's impressed you about what Coach Yo has built down Knoxville? Uh, you know, it, it's hard to do what she's done. And I think the, um, the thing that I uh, appreciate the most about watching her teams is, is just how hard they play, you know, and how tough they are. And, um, and you can see that they've really bought in to her vision. And any coach that watches a team do that, it, you know, you have respect for what's going on down there. It's, it's very impressive. Any other questions? All right. Thank you for your time. Coach. All right. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you.